Good morning. morning. I'm Nick. And I'm still Rachel. We didn't film yesterday, but what we did do is get haircut. We'd already seen a lot of what we wanted to see in Malacca in our previous video. So we didn't really have much planned yesterday. So we kind of took an opportunity just to relax a bit, catch up on some work. But we did go back out to the Jonker Street food market and tried a couple of new things. We tried a deep fried ice cream, uh, which came with durian flavor, which was actually very nice. And then on top of that, we had the most incredible mango smoothie. All in all, very good investments. The only thing we have planned today is that we're traveling by bus from Malacca to Singapore. I don't think it's going to be that interesting because it's the same type of bus travel that we have been doing. It's supposed to be three, three and a half hours, but you know, our experience with Malaysian buses, it could be a lot longer than that. It is interesting though, because this will be our first time crossing a border in Asia, whereas while we're in Europe doing bus travel, we did that all the time. So hopefully there'll be no drama and we'll see you in Singapore. But first, coffee. We're at the bus station in Malacca and I had read on a vlog about these incredible coffee coated buns from a place called Mama Buns. We hadn't encountered Mama Buns until we were at the station today. This is what the bun looks like. Apparently the bun is soaked in coffee here. I am so excited to try it. Mm. Oh my god. It's kind of crispy on top, but the bun is yet so soft and it melts in your mouth and there is this like sugary taste to it. It's so good. hostel in Singapore. We are so excited to go to explore the city today, but first things first, we need to go have breakfast. And our hostel provides one. Apparently it's pretty basic, but you know, free, good. If certainly I look a little bit tired, then there is definitely a reason for that. We got to bed around midnight-ish, but somebody, and we have no idea who that is, decided it was a really good idea to set up. 6.30 and rather than just wake up and unset it immediately like a normal person decided to leave it running for half an hour and then proceeded to snooze it multiple times. So I'm not the happiest camper and today is going to be mostly sponsored by caffeine so let's get cracking. Just come back from breakfast. It was pretty basic, but we definitely had a fair amount of toast and coffee to make it more than worth it. Also met a lovely couple from North London, which meant that we whiled away a couple of hours just chatting, which was great. Now Rachel is putting on some makeup and we're about to head out and explore the city some more. What? I swear to God, if we see actual otters crossing around here, I will lose my proverbial. There will be no comeback from that. We are currently stood in front of Marina Bay Sands Resort. My understanding is that there is a casino in there, a theater, a mall, a museum, as well as a huge hotel. What you see on the top of it here, there is this incredible infinity pool that I would love to one day be able to access, but you have to be a guest at the hotel. And of course, we can't afford to stay there. So we'll have to come back so we can experience that another time. One day when we have enough subscribers and money coming in from YouTube to be able to afford it, then we will come back. If we rotate this way, oh, 
here's the lotus flower. That lotus flower shaped building is the Art Science Museum. Okay, we're gonna keep walking around and see what else we can see. Do you think this is my size? It dwarfs you. I don't know what you're talking about. It's tiny, really. Just like that we've completed one whole lap of the marina bay in singapore and we have stopped at what is known as the mer lion so as you can see it's half lion half fish why you ask well the fish part represents singapore's origins as a fishing village the lion comes from singapore's original name singapura which means lion city so combines both and you have well, nothing over there. Now that we've completed the one lap, I think we're going to go and find some food for lunch before we go to Gardens by the Bay. Stop by the local 7-Eleven to pick up all of this for lunch, and we're going to sit here and eat this while we have a view of the bay. After a long period of urbanization and economic growth in this region, the Prime Minister of Singapore in 2005 decided that in order to simulate a comeback for nature, to encourage flora and fauna in this particular area, that there needed to be an urban park. So with that then came the announcement that this particular area called Gardens by the Bay would be created. This 101 hectare park is absolutely gorgeous, home to a lot of indigenous plant and animal life. But one of the cool and outstanding features is what we're in right now, which is the super tree grove. Now, as you can see just behind us here, these are metal structures which reach up into the sky, but on each of their trunks is a plethora of different plants selected to be grown up among it and this was part of the plan in order to bring more birds in and more insects and just more life in general. It's really unique it's not like anything I've ever seen before and the great thing is that this super tree grove is completely free to visit. Now there is a skyway where you can walk amongst the super trees and there's also a super tree observatory where you can go up the largest one and have a look. They're not too badly priced but I think you get a really good view just from down here as well and there are tons of shops and restaurants built into this entire complex I guess you'd call it including the flower dome which I think is the 
largest greenhouse in the world. Is that what you said? Yes. And there's also something called the Cloud Forest. Now you can't buy individual tickets for these. It's a combi ticket. And I believe it is... 53 Singaporean dollars, which is 53 Canadian. How easy is that conversion for us right. while we're here? We're getting to see a lot of flora and fauna here. We're undecided on if we want to spend that kind of money to go see the Flower Dome and the Cloud Forest. I'm sure they're amazing, but neither Nick or I are crazy into our flora. I think this is pretty much the same as a number of other things that maybe people have earmarked for us while we've been on our travels that we just haven't done. If we were just doing a normal vacation whereby we had a set budget and it didn't really matter what we spent it on a massive amount, then of course we would probably just say, let's go for it. However, since we are traveling for such a long period of time, then we really do have to think about budget. And so we do really have to second guess these kinds of things, especially when they do stack up to be the amount of money that they could be. So really $106 for something that could be great or could be a bit of a miss unless we're absolutely 100 percent sure that we both want to do it then we don't necessarily see the value of going in to me going into a greenhouse although gorgeous isn't quite the same experience as going on safari or going on a hot air balloon ride among the fairy chimneys for example which is where we would splash out because it's a once in a lifetime experience but I do like that you can come here and kind of customize what you want to do, see what you want to see and spend what you want to. That is a really cool option. And apparently at night there's a great light show here. So we're excited to see that as well. But we do have a free day tomorrow. So if we change our minds, we can always come back. Yeah, exactly. I think definitely Singapore, if you're not careful, can be a very, very expensive city. But based on what we've done today, the vast majority of it, aside from buying food, has been free. Yeah, which is wonderful. And I love cities where you can do that kind of thing and still get the most out of it. I've really enjoyed walking around the marina. Yep. And they've set the marina up so well is the other thing. Absolutely. It's very pedestrian friendly, tourist friendly. It's a really cool place to just go for a walk. We saw people running. You could shop, have lunch with a view. Yeah, it seems very pedestrian friendly, but I, I don't know, there's a part of me that kind of also rates this to be kind of a Dubai standard of livable mm. as well. To the point where I would just be like, oh, I wonder what it'd be like to get a job here, what would the cost of an apartment be, all of that kind of stuff. But that's another thought and another discussion for another time. Yeah, it seems very westernized, modernized. It's very comfortable. Yeah, it's got all of your creature comforts that you could possibly shake a stick at. And all your designer stores. Yeah. <laughs> but slightly less expensive than Dubai. Yes. It's more along Toronto Canadian prices in terms of for food, it seems. Absolutely. We're having a great time so far. Absolutely. It's we'll see what else we get up to. After a great time at Gardens by the Bay, we then went back to our room to do a little bit of work and now we're hungry, so we're heading out to the Chinatown Street Market. I cannot wait to see what authentic local food we find here. We had a good wander around the Chinatown night market and it wasn't quite what we expected. I think that I was expecting something like the hawker markets in Malaysia and this was more souvenirs and clothing shops and fruit stalls with no food stalls. There are quite a few restaurants and they all vary in price from pretty cheap to quite expensive but none of it was really that appealing and they didn't even have the traditional dish that we had read about everywhere. The name of the food is Hainanese chicken rice and we've been told by various sources that essentially it's the best thing since the last bread. So that was really the aim of what we wanted to do so that I could give it a try but the places that are supposed to sell it are all closed and the places that are open don't sell it so we're at a bit of a loss here. We ended up going to Chinatown Complex where you can see they have a ton of vendors there, but they were all closed. So 
I don't know if everything just closes early here, but like, it's not even 8 o'clock yet. So we're a little bit confused about what's gone on. And I know Singapore food is a mix of Malaysian, Indian, Chinese, Thai. They kind of all blend together. So we've settled on an Indian restaurant. We've taken a look at what other people are eating and it looks amazing. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be good. It's fairly cheap for Singapore, but it's just disappointing that we couldn't really find what we had intended to. Yeah, we're hoping that if we try again at, say, lunchtime, then we might be a little bit more in luck. So let's see if we can try that tomorrow. Yeah. Well, that was absolutely delicious, if unexpected. Mm -hmm. Again, we will try and hunt down some more typically Singaporean dishes. But for now, we are going to just wind down for the night and we'll be back up and at it tomorrow. But until next time, Take care. And keep smiling.